Hello guys, this is Honor Gaming and first off, just off the bat guys, I'm gonna tell you straight up that this video is going to be probably one of the most informative and most important videos that I share with all my viewers and my subscribers. So I would definitely uh, advise and recommend that every player, uh, you know, concentrate and focus in and in what I have to share today, okay? so. I've been playing Mech Arena for about maybe four months, five months, something around that right now. It's not a long time as much as the other uh, longer you know, players. I know some creators have been playing for over a year, maybe a year and a half, right? So I'm not as experienced as them, but uh, I did play an extensive amount. I do have a nice, uh, decent squad power hanger with over 5,000. So I'm gonna give you my personal, uh, I'm gonna share everything about my control settings, about my current hangar. So this is gonna be a, uh, a Dream Team hangar update as well. But I'm also going to share with you what I think is the best mech and weapons uh, combinations, okay? So I'm gonna share everything with you today in this video. So, uh, you know, I hope you got, it's helpful, helpful for you guys, okay? So I'm doing with the pure purpose that it helps with your gameplay. Uh, if your gameplay and your style fits mine, great. Then you can, uh, you know, follow some of the things that I use, uh, my settings and weapon choices, etc. And I hope that my experience, okay, through some failures, through upgrading the wrong weapons, through upgrading the wrong mechs, etc., etc., will give you a good idea, okay? And I'm gonna be very honest with you, not uh, just about my hangar, from facing various uh, high-powered squad players as well, okay? So let me just first start with the most important thing uh, that makes my play unique, okay? So if you have been watching my videos, if you know about Honor Gaming, if you've seen my previous videos, at least two or three of them, you know that my game style is very aggressive. Now, you might think that my game style only applies when I'm playing pub games, but that's not true. When I'm playing with high squad power as well, my gameplay is very similar to my pub. My gameplay is basically infiltrate the opponents as, as quickly as possible and do as much damage to their first main mech, okay? So guys, you have to know that most players will take out and bring out their most valued, their best, and their favorite mech the first, okay? Their first choice for their mech is going to be the one that they feel most confident, most comfortable, and that they feel like their gameplay fits the best. So for me, it's usually the kill shot. In some cases, someone will play the Ares first. Some will play Juggernaut first. Some will play Zephyr first. But the point is most players will take out their best mech first. So my gameplay being aggressive and my main job is to waste all five of my mechs as soon as possible while putting as much damage as I can to the opponents. Meaning I take out their strongest mechs, their most comfortable mechs, so that their psychology is broken, their team spirit is broken, and that's my main goal. Okay, with that being said, and with that, uh, with that uh, being known to you guys and knowing my gameplay, let me share with you a couple of my control settings. So. I know that everyone has their own uh, control settings, but let me first share with you mine, okay? So let's first look at my customized control settings here on my screen. So as you guys know, I don't play on PC, I play purely on my mobile, okay? So as you guys can see, on my left, I have my uh, toggle, my movement toggle, and I've slightly shifted my movement toggle to the, uh, le uh, to the right side a bit and to the up a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm an aggressive player and I'm moving a lot, I need room, room to move fully left, fully bottom. So originally, if I keep this in the original status, okay, let's actually put it back to the previous original status, okay? So I'm going to reset this and I'm gonna show you how I build my, my current style of uh, uh, control setting, okay? So here we go, guys. So this is the original right here. It's completely different from my personal, my comfort uh, control settings, okay? So first of all, this right here, I'm going to reduce the size to about 75, or actually let's put 80, I think it was 80, okay? Now, if you see here, I'm gonna shift it a little bit to the right, and I'm going to make sure that I have enough room to pull back, so go, to, uh, go backwards, and also move fully left, okay? This is so that I can move faster than the opponents, okay? 
With the reload button, I'm going to reduce the size to 80 as well, okay? Because I don't use the reload button as much, okay? Usually I do a forced reload, meaning that I usually just waste my weapons into the sky, just shoot it into the sky or something, and just waste my weapons. And for me, that's just more comfortable, okay? All right, so now I reduce the size of my reload, and then I put it a little bit, to, uh, I move it a little bit to the center, okay? This is where I basically do my reloads. And anyways, I usually reload together at the same time. Next, I'm gonna move away the left and right, um, uh, what is it, uh, trigger outside, okay, for a bit. First thing is first, if you see the trigger button, the attack button is actually on the bottom and the abilities on the right, the top right. I'm going to actually move my ability down here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size of my ability, okay? Let me just first increase the size here to about 150. And the reason is because I actually use this a lot. Most of my mechs, for example, my favorite is kill shot. I need to use the ability very, uh, quite often, okay? So which means that, uh, by the way, this trigger, uh, that lock on is completely useless for me. Okay, so I'm gonna move it slightly here. All right, this is where I'm gonna use my ability. I'm gonna size it up to 150. Next, my trigger button, I like to have it a little bit big, so I'm gonna make it 150, okay? And I'm going to stick it right here, all right? Slightly to the left, okay? So that I can shoot and aim towards the right side as well, okay? So move my ability a little bit more. I'm gonna keep, uh, this is a little bit too much. Move my ability a little bit to the right so that I have uh, you know comfort in clicking at any time. I'm gonna keep my uh, trigger button here and right there so that I can move left and right, okay? So a little bit to the right, uh, left here so that I can aim left and right, left and right, okay? Also now, these buttons, I don't use the uh, separate uh, attack button for the left and right too often, so I'm gonna reduce them to 80, okay? And I'm gonna keep them right on top here. I'm gonna keep this one also as 80 and I'm gonna keep it right on top of my trigger button, okay? So let's set this up like this, boom right here like this. Basically, I have my ability ready to go anytime, okay? Uh, it's right there in my comfort zone. I got my trigger button right here, and my ability, I'm gonna stick it right there on the bottom, and as close to the right as I can. And this auto lock button, I don't use at all, to be honest with you. I never lock on the targets uh, using that, so I'm going to just keep that here, you know, somewhere here. Okay, let's actually reduce this size. I never use it anyway, so let's reduce it down to 50%. Uh, where is 50? Here we go, 50. All right, I like I like clean numbers, so I'm gonna make it to the 50 somehow. Here we go, there we go, 50. And I'm just gonna keep it and hide it right here in the corner, okay? Because I don't use it anyways. There we go, guys. All right, let's go into the preview and let, let me show you how it works. All right, here we go, guys. So basically, if you see this, I have the ability to move left and right uh, you know, at my comfort. I have the ability, I can use my ability very quickly and easily. And basically, if you see, I'm going to be uh, using my trigger left and right, left and right. It's big and I can't miss it, right? And basically, I can use left and right, left and right and aim all the way to the left, all the way to the right, okay? And this is the reason is because I'm always moving. As you guys, as I told you before, I'm a fast moving player, all right? So let's go back. Now let's change a little bit of a couple of the settings here. All right, I keep my damage display on. For the crosshair, I usually use a dot or a circle. In my case now, I use a circle because I, I do mix a little bit of sniping. Uh, for the targeting assist system, I always use the left side, the wide target. The reason is because I don't play as much sniper or long range. I usually play close range, fast moving, in their face, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, infighting, right? Weapon reload, I use that. Now, here's the important part on the settings here. If you look at this, look at my camera sensitivity, guys. It's at maximum. This is why, for a player like me, if, you, if I just dash right into your face and I start, uh, you know, uh, you know sidestepping to the right, most of the opponents have a very difficult time aiming at me. They're usually aiming at where I was one second ago because their sensitivity is usually, most players are usually playing at 90 or 94, maybe maximum 95. In my case, I use full camera sensitivity to 100, 
which means that basically my screen is going to be at maximum capacity. I'll be turning around, turning backwards. If I'm being attacked from the back, I'm going to turn around very quickly. If I'm in your face and I'm moving sidestepping with the fastest moving mech, such as kill shot, you're not going to catch up to me because your camera is not going to be able to catch up with me. So I would recommend all players who are serious to start practicing and playing and feeling comfortable at camera sensitivity 100. Okay. And the rest of it is not very important. It's just graphic qualities and etc. etc. Okay. So that's all set. Now, guys, with my settings disclosed to you, let's talk about my current mechs and my dream team hanger uh, right now. So let me just start off with this way. As you guys know, I'm an in fighter. My gameplay is very aggressive, so I usually choose mechs from the beginning. Started when I playing. Uh, when I started playing, my favorite mech was kill shot. It still is kill shot. There is no question about that because it's fast moving. Because his ability can damage the opponents, but also it's just so fast and its skill and all everything overall is just such a great mech. Okay, and but if you see the other mechs as well, Zephyr, if you look at it, it also has speed of 18, which is quite fast. Stalker, which is my new favorite, uh, my second favorite now after Kill Shot, is 22. Originally, I played uh, Shadow, which is also a fast moving mech. Panther is decently fast at uh, 20. It's quite fast, it's quite tanky, it's such a beautiful mech here. The only slow mech here is Redox, and this is one of my regrets. I'm not a big fan of Redox, okay? I know it's a great mech, I know everyone wants it, it looks like Gundam, and I know it looks like super cool high-tech bot, but in my opinion, I think, uh, you know, Redox is not deserving of a legendary status, okay? So this is one of, my, one of the things I'm hoping to change. If I had to change from any mech up here, I would personally um, full up and max up my surge and put arc torrents or disc launcher on it. Okay. That's just my personal thought. So once again, everything I share with you today is my personal experience, not the true correct, uh, you know, uh, answer to your gameplay. I'm talking about based on my gameplay. Okay. So let's first review my hangar right now. My dream team. First, I got my kill shot on one. My kill shot is maxed out. So it's got the 24 energy capacity. It's got 71,000 HP, which is quite decent. It's got 29 speed. Wow, 29 guys, the fastest moving mech in the game, okay? It's got an ability cooldown of six seconds, so blah, 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 ability damage 40,000 guys. That's very, very strong, okay? Just letting you know. And I'll just show you something in a bit with my pilot status, which makes it even better, okay? And all this, this, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's not important. now. What happened now since they incorporated the pilots? Right now, since the only legendary pilot available is Major, which is for the assault uh, rifles, assault weapons, I obviously put it on my kill shot, which is my favorite mech, okay? So unfortunately, I have to use Carbine, even though I don't think Carbine is the best weapon for a kill shot. As of now, it's not a bad deal, okay? Because of my legendary pilot. Now, if you see my legendary pilot and my implants on it, my implants are actually not based on the weapon. It's based on my kill shots ability. Look at this. Ability damage. If you see my ability damage, it's at level four right now, right? Level four, it gives me 15% increase. So my uh, dash damage was 40,000. Now it has a 15% increase. So it's basically doing about 48,000, okay? A little bit increase to damage. Ability cooldown. I got a 15% decrease on my ability cooldown. My uh, dash is six seconds. Now with that minus 15%, it's around basically around five seconds. So I get a one second uh, less cooldown. Now you guys think one second, what's the big difference? Guys, one second on a kill shot is super, super important. Now, if you guys are playing with super high squad uh, opponents and you meet a opponent kill shot and you're facing each other, you use dash first, he uses dash, and he will have the chance to dash you out too. But if you have this ability cooldown decrease, and my dash is uh, five seconds uh, cooldown, you're done, okay? You're finished, okay? So that's very important. Kill shot dash radius. Now this is the huge kicker here. I get a plus 27% AOE damage. Now why is this so important? I'll show you in a bit. But even the normal kill shot, if I slam into the wall, 
uh, a little bit far away from the opponent, I miss the damage. But with this, I get a 27% radius increase, which means that sometimes I literally dash like a screen away from my opponent and it still kills them. Okay, so I got this super AoE bo boost on my dash. And I chose Carbine Magazine because basically my weapon is not really there to kill. My weapon there is when I meet an Ares, I put down their shield first. Or when I meet a Juggernaut, I put down their shield first. Or I use dash on Zephyrs, on you know Lancers, on other kill shots, and I finish them off with my Carbine. So all I need is more magazine so that I can be killing more opponents quickly and fast. Okay, I'm a striking them real fast. Okay, that's my kill shot status. Now, let's look at my Panther. My Panther is maxed out. And in order for me to use dual railguns, you have to max out Panther. With that, basically a maxed out Panther gets the 32 energy capacity, which is the maximum available for all mechs. It's got 71,200 HP, which is similar, or should I say same, as the kill shot, right? But uh, it has a really nice speed of 20, okay, 20 kilometers. And it's, uh, you know, all this ability duration, ability cooldown, not very important. Now, I got my dual rail guns there, which are at, uh, you know, level six, which is a decent damage there, 62,000. But the pilots, right now, I'm just using a Yeti. Now, everyone asks me, hey, why aren't you using Torchlight right here, which is made for the sniper? And I'll explain why. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm so sorry for the uh, you know players who are not uh, you know uh, making a lot of purchases, of premium purchases. But I'm sorry to tell you this. But torchlight is completely useless compared to an epic. Um, what should I say? An epic pilot. Okay. I'm so sorry. But this is just the reality. And I'll explain why. You think that torchlight is best when I'm using a sniper weapon. But you know the fact is, even if I max it out, look at this. If I max, max out a Torchlight, which is a rare pilot, it's gonna give me plus 17% HP. It's gonna give me 12% innate skill damage, which means it's gonna increase my uh, sniper damage by 12%. And then obviously uh, here, if you see sniper, uh, yeah, basically here, weapon damage. The weapon damage here is very important as well. Weapon damage is not shown here, but based on the rarity of your pilot, it increases. For example, Right now, my Torchlight is rank one, uh, it's uh, level one. So let's say I max it out to level six. It's going to become my, my uh, weapon damage, my pure weapon damage, whatever weapon I use, is gonna be around 18 to 12, 20%, right? Plus, it's gonna give me 12% innate damage. So what is it? About 30% increased damage on my sniper weapon, okay? Now, let me show you a legendary status. A legendary, uh, if I max it out, it's gonna give me 40% mech HP, 30% innate skill damage, <clears throat> sorry, which means that my major is made for assault weapons, right? So it's giving me 30% assault. But now my Panther is using railguns, so is Torchlight, uh, is a major legendary pilot not great? Look at there, right there on the weapon damage. Do you see on the right side here, guys? Look, weapon damage, 28% at rank five, okay? So look at this. If you read it, damage is a measurement of how much damage a mech's weapon can deal. When paired, a pilot will boost weapon damage for all equipped weapons. So, what does that mean? You max out Torchlight to level 6, okay? And even with the innate skill damage that increases the sniper weapons because of its Torchlight, plus the rare pilot naturally gives weapon damage increase, you're going to get less than 30%, close to 30%. Now look at my major legendary pilot. At level five, right now, I get a natural 30% boost on all weapons, and then I get a 20% assault weapon damage increase. Now, if I max this out, look what happens. My uh, weapon damage is gonna be at 30%, okay? And then I'm going to get 30% more, so it's gonna be 60% on my assault rifle. So now, even if I use a major, uh, major on my Panther, a legendary pilot on my Panther with railguns, which gives zero innate skill damage to snipers, I'm gonna do more damage with my major legendary pilot, just because it's a legendary pilot. Once again, guys, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but this is the reality. Yes, I don't support this kind of system, but it's the truth, okay? This is the difference between a rare pilot and a legendary pilot, which means there's a difference between a rare pilot 
and a uh, epic pilot like this. So Yeti already gives me 10% weapon damage. Even though it does nothing for sniper rifles, I still get that 10% boost and I get a 7.2% mech HP increase. So no matter what I use, instead of uh, ramping up and wasting all my uh, A coins and my pilot points on uh, leveling up Torchlight, which is a rare pilot, and in the future, they're definitely going to launch a epic sniper uh, pilot, right? They're gonna launch it. It's probably next after Nova. When they launch it, uh, Torchlight, all your uh, upgrades on Torchlight is gonna be a waste of money. I'm sorry to tell you that. I hope it helps you now so you stop your upgrading on your Torchlight, okay? Anyways, I got the Railgun Damage boost here. Doesn't Not really helpful. I'm not upgrading them because they're just rare implants right now. And I just put a random ability duration, okay? So that's my Panther status here. Let's look at my Redox. The reason why I'm using Redox, as I told you in uh, just a couple minutes ago, I'm not a big fan of Redox, but the reason why I'm using it is because just it's maxed out, okay? I spent a lot of money on it, I invested a lot on this Redox, and right now it's the only fifth mech that is fully upgraded, so I'm just using it, okay? Like I said, if you ask me personally, based on my gameplay and my style, if what mech I would use, uh, if I was not, if I could max out any mech I want on the list, I'll use Surge, okay? So that's just based on my game style. It's not because Surge is great. It's just an assault. Uh, it's just a push in, dash in like a kill shot. So it just fits my game style of, you know, basically going straight into the enemies and, you know, causing havoc, okay? Anyways, right now on my Redox, I'm just using my Disc Launcher 12. And because the other epic uh, pilot that's available is with guided weapons, uh, that's why I'm using kill, uh, Disc Launcher. And luckily, I have a couple nice ones here. Uh, I got the Disc Launcher Reload, which is super great. Now look at this. If I max out my Disc Launcher Reload Time, I'm gonna get a negative 32% reload time. The reload time on Disc Launcher is like, what is it, like four seconds, five seconds or something? So if I get a negative 32, I'm gonna lose about two seconds into it. It's gonna be crazy, guys. Disc Launcher, I'm gonna be able to reload in three seconds, 3.5 seconds or something like that, okay? It's just a great, great, great uh, implant here. Uh, I got my Stalker Predator Drive here, uh, drive here right now because sometimes I use my Disc Launcher on my Stalker, so I just keep this now. It's my other legendary implant that's available, okay? So that's my current Redox, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's look into this. This is my Stalker right now. Uh, my Stalker is maxed out. <clears throat> this is my second favorite mech now after kill shot, okay? It's got 24 energy capacity, 85,000 health, which is slightly over kill shot, which makes sense since the stalker ability makes you take higher damage, okay? Uh, it's got a really nice speed of 22, uh, and its ability duration is 9 seconds, which is not bad at all. Once I use Predator Drive, which is its skill, I get a 50% bonus damage increase, which is crazy. That's, that's the same as Brick House, by the way but I get a 25% incoming damage increase, which means I take 25% more damage when I get hit. And now uh, I get a 10% heal on kill, which is basically one bar, okay? Every time I kill an opponent, I get one bar of health, okay? And that's pretty much it here with the Stalker. So right now I'm just using Rocket Mortars, which is fully max, uh, not maxed out, sorry, it's rank uh, level six, rank six, level four, okay? And basically, it does about 57,000 damage with my Stalker Predator Drive on, which increases 50%. Each of my, each magazine will be doing 75,000. Basically, any mech will most likely die if I use at least one or two of them. So knowing that a kill shot's HP at maxed out is 71,000. Uh, right now, my damage per magazine is 57,000. Why rocket mortars are so great on Stalker is right now, if I shoot one side of my rocket mortar on a kill shot and it all hits, it's not gonna kill the fully maxed out kill shot. Why? Because it's gonna do 57,000 damage. However, if I have Predator Drive on, it's gonna increase the damage by 50%, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing about 80 to 85,000 damage, which will automatically kill a fully maxed out kill shot, okay? So that's why it's just so great here and works on my stalker. So when I use Predator Drive and I shoot Rocket Mortar on one side and then I aim another opponent with another side, I can get two shot, two kills, maybe even three or four kills max, okay? All right, with my Predator Drive on. Now, I got my Fey Epic Pilot here. It's uh, rank five right now, level four. I got this beautiful implant here, Rocket Mortar Damage Radius. This is probably the best implant in the game, 
okay? This is my personal opinion, but if you're a rocket mortar user, this is the best implant you can get, okay? Along with the arc turret range. These two are just, just epic, and I'm gonna show you that in a bit, but look at this, guys. My, uh, right now, it's at level five, right? Level five right now, and look at this, guys. It gives me a 55% damage radius. What that means is when my uh, missiles land on the floor, my mortars land, even if the opponent is 55% distance away from its normal radius, it will attack, it will hit the mech. So it's just, just, it's just crazy, guys. This is one of the crazy implants that I think should not exist. But guess what? I have it, so I'm going to use it, okay? And then I got the rocket mortar damage. Unfortunately, I don't have the epic version of this. I wish I did. And then I got the market mortar range. This one is optional, by the way, guys. This is not really necessary. There's only an epic version of this, I think, but I'm not really interested in that. What I think the two best implants is rocket mortar radius and rocket mortar damage for a rocket mortar user, okay? The third one is actually up to you, okay? Now, uh, let's go into my fifth mech, which is the Zephyr, which is also maxed out here. It gives me 24 energy capacity, 71,200 HP, which is the same as the Kill Shot and the Panther, okay? It's got a speed of 18, which is not bad, okay? It's, it's a little slow, but not too slow. Okay, it's got the, uh, obviously got the stun ability and everything like that. Now, I'm currently using Arc Torrents on it because I'm, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a decent, uh, it's probably one of the top two weapons for Zephyr. Uh, my arc, arc Torrent is right now at rank 6, level 5. Uh, I, I'm probably going to max it out. Because Arc Torrent 10 is one of the weapons that you should max out no matter what. It is just the top 5 weapons. So it's definitely a keeper. Okay? And I got my G-Lock, which is beauty right now. It's a rank 5, level 7, ready to go to rank 6. I got this num This is, what, like I said, one of the top 2 cheapest implants. Craziest implants that shouldn't exist. Look at this, guys. I got an Arc Torrent. Uh, right now, it's at level 5, and I got... Uh, is it level 5? Level 4, and I got a 44% range increase. My Arc Torrents right now are like a mid-range sniper weapon, okay? It's just crazy, guys. I really think this, this implant shouldn't exist, but once again, I have it, so I'm going to use it, okay? And I got my Arc Torrent magazines. Level 4 gives me 16% more magazine size. Very important. Okay, when you're trying to kill three or four mechs at the same time, just laying in front of you, stunned out. And then I got my level four arc turn damage, which is being 15% damage increase, which is pretty nuts. Now, if you see right now, my G lock gives me weapon damage naturally of 18, 18%, let's just call it 20%, close quarter weapon damage of 15%. So, how much is that? Already plus 35% damage increase. And then I got my Arc Torrent damage increase of 15%. So I get a 50% damage increase on my Arc Torrents. And I got a 44% range increase. And I got a 16% magazine increase. This is just a deadly combination. There is no other better combination for a, a Arc Torrent uh, Im, uh, implant status or pilot status on your G-Lock. Max out your G-Locks. Get these three implants and max it out. That's it. If you can get the legendary version of the Arc Torrent damage, then game over, guys. With the rain, uh, with the magazine, I think there is no uh, uh, legendary version. If you can get the uh, the epic version, which is the maxed out, get these three. So epic version of this, legendary version of the range, legendary version of the damage, I believe exists. Then you're fully set on your G lock. You max it out. Get your arc torrents tenants maxed out. Game over, guys. You're you're set to be one of the most deadly mechs and combination with weapon, no matter what. Okay, that's just game over right there. All right, so that's my Dream Team Hangar update right now. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of my thoughts on the other mechs, okay? So if you see here, guys, my Paragon, my Arachnos, my Guardian is not really upgraded here. My Lancer as well, my Shadow is level uh, rank five. Juggernaut is only rank two. Ares is only rank three. My Brick House I didn't even obtain yet. And I don't have Tengu, by the way. My MD is 2. My Cheetah is 5. So, as you guys can see, I just focused on a couple of my mechs and getting maxed out 5 mechs, okay? Now, with that being said, I'm going to just give you a couple things so that you guys don't waste your A coins. You guys don't waste your time. You guys don't waste your uh, money on the wrong mechs. I'm just going to tell you straight up. I'm sorry to tell you, but at the end game, this is the reality, guys. And once again, this is my opinion. You can disagree with me and please share it on the comments if you disagree, okay? Paragon, 
just throw it away, guys. Don't even waste your time on trying to maxing it out. It's gonna be useless forever. There's no way the Paragon skill, this ability boost is ever even going to compare with any mech, even the Lancer, okay? So Paragon, out of the question, useless. Arachnos, sorry guys. Sorry for you spider arachnoid lovers, but once again, completely useless, forever useless. Even if they uh, upgrade the, the spider turret to become like a super sniper or something, useless. Okay, I'm sorry guys. Guardian, very good mech, okay? However, if I had to rate it on the low, mid, high tier, I would say Guardian is mid tier, and I'm sorry. In a team game, Guardian is amazing. Guardian is super top tier in a team game. But if you're a person who likes to just play pub and usually plays private, doesn't play like, you know, very competitive uh, games with high squad powers, Guardian is useless. If you have high squad power players and you're playing competitive, doing squad five versus fives, Guardian is a top tier. But if not, mid tier, okay? So if you ask me, should I invest in it? If you like to play conservative, if you like to camp it out, if you like to play snipers, if you like to play strategically, and waiting for the opponents and stuff like that, yes, Guardian is a top tier for you. But for me, if you're a fast moving player, or aggressive player, not really, but still I would say it's a mid to top tier. Yes, it's worth the investment, okay? Uh, sorry, I skipped Panther. Panther, guys, it's a must. Panther is a must. If you have Panther, start now and start upgrading it. It's gonna be one of your top mechs. It's the top mech in almost all top squad players. Competitively, public games, whatever it is, it's just a crazy mech. Stasis barrier, just one of the cheapest abilities ever. Slows them down, completely uh, takes away all damage received, 100%. Even blocks rocket mortars if you use it strategically. Game over, guys, nothing to say. Stalker, I would say it's between top mid and top tier. What I mean by that, so if I give it on a scale to one to 10, Stalker is around the eight, eight out of 10, okay? So it can be very useful, but you must max it out. Stalker is not gonna be very useful if you don't max it out. And even if you max it out, it's only useful in very strategic positions. And actually the Stalker, to be honest with you, if it's not using rocket mortars, and if you're not in a map that you can use rocket mortars, Stalker is, can only be considered maybe a, a pub, it's more of a pub game mech, okay? So it's not going to be a team, team play mech, in my opinion, okay? So it's, I'm gonna rate it at a 7.58. But still, for me, it's a 10, okay? For me, it's a 10. It's one of my favorite, it works for me. The gameplay I play, I don't play any squad games or competitive, so it's great. Redox, guys, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Redox itself is probably a seven, a seven out of 10, okay? For some users, they might even consider it an eight out of 10, similar to the Stalker. I'm going to give it a six out of 10, or maybe even 5.5 out of 10, okay? And I'm being a little bit critical with the Redox because the Redox is not only is it slow, look at the speed, it's 16. The Caustic Blast is very, very sensitive to the map. Although it gives you 32 energy capacity, the biggest problem with the Redox is actually the price. Guys, in order to rank it and max it out so that you get 32 energy capacity, so getting rank six, level seven, you're gonna need to spend over $1,000. If I give you the cost in dollars, you're gonna need to spend $1,000. And if you're a free to play player and you luckily get you know, Redox or you just buy the mech and it's uh, you know, at rank five or something like that, if you have five stars, don't even think about trying to uh, you know, grind your way to make your Redox into a maxed out. Okay, I'll be honest with you. If you're going to grind it out and not pay for it with real money, you're gonna need, you know, by the time you max out Redux, there's probably gonna be three or four new mechs released that are just 10 times better than Redux. So personally, if you ask me, if yes, I know there's gonna be people who disagree, I'm gonna give Redux a 5.5 or, or maybe a six and it's not worth your investment, okay? Next, Lancer. Lancer, guys, I know there's a lot of fans. I know there are people who just love playing the Lancer. I know it's just really fun, but I'm just gonna tell you straight up, Lancer can never be an end game mech. You guys can give me a bunch of reasons saying that, oh, you know, it's just because, you know, if you play it in the right map, if you know how to use it, if you get into the right position, yes, I understand that, but it's very easy to kill a Lancer who's sitting up on the top of a building. 
Now there's a weapon called Disc Launcher 12, and if I lock onto you, I can hit you just aiming at the sky, and it'll auto aim and it'll hit you, but right back, even though you're on top of me and I can't see you. So I don't think that Lancer is a top tier mech. So if I rate it, I would say it's a low mid. I would give it a score of maybe four or five max. Four or five, five, just so the Lancer lovers don't try to hack me down, okay? Because I said this, but I think four, maybe five, okay? And I think it's not worth your investment. Even if you max it out, you only get 16. So the best weapon I've seen on my opponent was a maxed out Lancer with dual disc launcher eight. But guess what, guys? Disc launcher eight is nothing compared to a disc launcher 12. So if you're facing me and you, even if you're on top of a building, just shooting these disc launcher eights at me, even if you're maxed out this launcher eight, you're not gonna do much damage to me. I'm sorry to tell you. It's gonna be a little like, you know, you're, you're throwing little pins at me. I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna just rocket mortar you or I'm just going to throw my this launcher 12 at you into the sky, auto locked onto you and you're gone. Sorry about that guys. Even if I max it out, your HP is probably gonna be maybe like 70,000, 60,000, something like that. Very low. Kill shot guys, your number one priority. Max it out. Put all your investment into kill shot. This should be your priority, whether you're a starting player right now, whether you're, you're uh, you know, a mid, mid game player right now. If your kill shot is not maxed out, you put every A coin, every uh, thing you have into maxing this mech out, okay? There's no question about it. Don't say anything. If you disagree with this, guys, I'm sorry, but you're, you're completely wrong. Max out your kill shot. This is gonna be your end game mech for at least the next three years of mech arena, okay? Next. Shadow, this is a tough one, guys. I love Shadow because it's fast moving. Look at the speed, 29 kilometers. If I go into stealth mode, it's even higher than 30. It's maybe like 35 kilometers per hour. So it's probably the fastest moving mech available once he uses his uh, skill. If I had to rate it, okay? First of all, if I max it out, I get 16. If I have to rate Shadow, I think Shadow is probably a five or a six. Okay, if used and maxed out with the right weapon and used really smart and strategically with camera sensitivity 100 and you know how to play the game, you know how to use psychology, you know how to use the barriers. If you get dual uh, disc launcher eights on your shadow, okay, and you use stealth mode and you start, uh, you know, uh, sidestepping and attacking uh, opponents, I would say it can even go up to a seven. Okay, but is it worth your initial investment right now? Not right now, guys. I think Shadow should not be your priority. Okay, now Surge. Surge is a really funny one, guys. Surge is a very funny mech because um, this is kind of like the legendary Lancer, okay? Except obviously it's a legendary mech, so it's gonna be much better. The, the Surge is a very, very good mech if you use it right, okay? So once again, it's a great mech, but it has its downfalls. It's very slow, okay? It's about 20, it's not too slow, sorry. It's not too slow. Maybe they changed the speed or I don't know. But anyway, it's not too slow, uh, but its skill is really nice. It goes well with many weapons. You can use carbine, you can use rocket mortars, you can use disc launcher, you can use uh, uh, arc torrents. All of them are great on the surge. So it's a great mech once again. Because it's a legendary mech, it's just so expensive to upgrade, guys. It's very difficult for you to get all the blueprints. And once again, it's almost impossible. If you, if you don't make purchases and if you don't use real money, you're never really going to be able to upgrade surge and redox at the same time. But if I give you a rating, I think surge is a top tier mech. Okay, at least in my game style. If I give you an honest public rating of Surge, I would say Surge is probably a 6.5 or a 7 out of 10. But for me, I think Surge is, is an 8. Sometimes I feel like Surge is a 9. Okay, so it's not as good as Kill Shot, but it's around the level of Stalker for me. Okay, so it's a quite a great mech. I am thinking and, and I am considering uh, maxing out my Surge uh, real soon. Okay. Now Juggernaut, okay, Juggernaut is the real kicker, guys. In the past, I didn't like Juggernaut, but as I started to play with high squad power players, I realized that Juggernaut is probably the top, the best mech available in the game. But, but, listen to me carefully, guys. Juggernaut, when maxed out, has 24 energy capacity, which is enough to use most uh, top tier weapons, okay? That's enough. The Juggernaut, when maxed out, is just unkillable, guys. You just cannot kill a Juggernaut with dual Disc Launcher 12s maxed out. I've seen some opponents, I just couldn't kill it, even with five mechs jumping into action. The Juggernaut is just too strong. So, if I need to rate the Juggernaut, I'm gonna tell you Juggernaut 
is a 9.5 to a 10. However, however guys, however, please do not max out Juggernaut before you max out Killshot, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, Juggernaut is going to be the best mech in the game. Even better than Killshot. Especially when you start going to play competitive, every single high squad, serious competitive players are going to max out Juggernaut, 100%. This is the best mech available in a competitive game, okay? It's just unkillable, guys. I've met some maxed out juggernauts with maxed out disc launchers, and they just completely destroyed me, okay? Especially in the right map, they will just be, un uh, you, just, you just cannot kill a juggernaut. So yes, you should upgrade it if you're okay with this slow kind of, you know, like I'm a tank, boom, boom, boom kind of gameplay style, okay? You're okay with slow movement, you're okay with being strategic, staying in the back, moving in slowly. You like that? Juggernaut is definitely a must, okay? So max that out. Ares, guys, is another tricky one. Ares, if you liked Juggernaut, then Ares is probably the third mech that you should upgrade and max out, okay? Once again, because it has a shield, it has a high HP, uh, it has the 24 energy capacity, which is more than enough to use some great weapons. Okay, so Ares, if I had to give you, uh, I would say it's a mid top, okay, mid to top tier. Uh, it's not as good as the Juggernaut, so I'm gonna give the rating about a seven, okay? The reason why I give Ares a seven, even though I could give it an eight, the reason why I give Ares a seven is because Ares is vulnerable from the back compared to a Juggernaut. A Juggernaut doesn't matter. Its shield is completely, it, it basically is a damage absorbing shield. The personal shield here is a damage absorbing shield. The Ares, if I can come from behind and I dash an Ares with the shield up from the behind, the shield doesn't matter. It ignores the shield, it goes straight into the HP. That's why I'm giving Ares a seven. However, it's still a great mech. It's very, very tanky. And with the Disc Launcher 12 maxed out, it's also a great mech, okay? Or the Arc Turn 10s, also a great weapon on it. Or even a Missile Rack 12, okay? Everything is just a very versatile mech. Uh, uh, I would say publicly, it's you know people would give it a 7.5 or an 8. I'm going to give Ares a 6.5 or a 7, okay? So it's worth the investment, yes. Brickhouse, okay, I haven't used it. But I think Brickhouse is really... I'm going to say it's a 5, okay? Maybe a 6, okay? It's a legendary pilot, uh, mech. It's very, very nice. Okay, it's great with rocket mortars, it's great with carbines, it's great with arc torrents and stuff, but it just has so many flaws, okay? Once again, it doesn't have a shield, it's quite tanky with its HP, its skill is nice because it gives buff to you and the opponents, but when you're facing a sniper or something like that, the, the, the brick house is pretty useless, okay? It, it's, it's, it's a little bit, you know, weak. I would give it a 5, maybe a 5.5. I think publicly people will probably give it a 6, maybe a 7, okay? All right. Let's go into MD. MD, guys, I'll just be honest. This is just, a, once again, it's like a Lancer to me. It's a fan favorite. It gives the heal. If you have one in a competitive team and you have an MD in your team, it's gonna change up the game. So yes, maybe, you know, if, if your squad or most of your squad doesn't have a fully maxed out MD, you can play the Medic. And if you play the Medic in the game, that's great. You're gonna be a huge help in a competitive game, in the pub game. People are gonna love you. They're gonna see you and just, you're gonna be a fan favorite. Yes, but I'm going to give it, honestly, if, you know, obviously we can't have five MDs, you know what I'm saying, in a competitive game. I just can't imagine seeing that. Uh, it would just be so easy for a kill shot to just jump in and kill everyone, all the MDs, okay? So I think MD, I'm going to rate it at about a six, okay? Is it worth your investment right now? No, I think it should be, you know, after you get your five main mechs, I think you should work on your MD, Okay. All right, I know there's a lot of MD lovers. I know you guys are gonna disagree, but I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Cheetah, guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. In a pub game, this is one of the most exciting mechs. I love its mind skill. You can really do a lot of damage, especially with the new implant that gives uh, the damage, right? There's an implant here. Uh, where is it? Implant, implant, implant. So if I get ability damage, max it out, I'm gonna get a, uh, what is it? 30% increase on my mines. Also, I'm going to get, uh, where, is the, uh, where is the cheetah mine damage? If I max it out, I get another 30%, so I'm gonna get a 60% increase on my mine damage. I'm gonna throw six mines on the floor. It's gonna be quite fun, 
max, uh, super damages. It's gonna be quite amazing. Let's see the damage. Uh, yeah, 18,000. So if you set up six and then you get another 60% damage increase, how much is that? That's like a 25,000, uh, 30,000 damage per mine or something like that. So it's gonna be crazy. So it's gonna be a nice mech to use. Um, it's kind of like using rocket mortars, okay? But do I think Cheetah can be useful in a uh, squad uh, competitive game? Yes and no. I'm gonna give Cheetah a six or a 6.5, okay? So it's gonna be a mid to top tier range mech. Uh, is it worth your uh, investment? I think once again, you should max out five main mechs first and then work on your Cheetah, okay? So Cheetah would be not your priority. Now the Zephyr, no questions asked guys. This one, you max it out. It's got the 24 energy capacity. It's got one of the cheapest, best skills in the game. The shock pulse, super, uh, it's got such a great range. It's got such a long stun time. This Zephyr is just a must. You must have it on your team, whether you play competitive, whether you play pub, it's just a game changer. Whether you play conservative and you stay in the back, you wait for them to come in like a spider, still the Zephyr is great. Even if you're rushing in and playing aggressive, you use the stun to just push through hard and heavy get those kill shots stunned out. It's just an amazing mech. Once again, it should be in your top five mechs, no matter what kind of gameplay you have. So invest in your Zephyr, okay? So this is my mech uh, review. Now let me just do a quick weapon review and I'm just going to, yeah, this is gonna be the final part of today's video, but auto cannons, throw it away. Plasma cannons, throw it away. Pulse cannon, I'm sorry, don't invest. Wait for your uh, higher weapons. Carbine eight, throw it away, carbine 10, don't invest. If you can get carbine 12 right away, invest everything in your carbine 12, but wait, don't invest on carbine 12 fully yet, guys, okay? Don't do what I did. Carbine 12 is a great weapon, is a great weapon, guys, there's no doubt about it. But if the legendary uh, major uh, pilot didn't come out, the legendary major pilot didn't come out as the first legendary, I would say carbine 12 would have died out because there are other uh, weapons that are much better, okay? So hold your investments on the carbine, okay? Next, RPGs, throw it away. Missile Rack 6, don't invest. Missile Rack 8, many people have already invested, don't invest more into it, okay? Missile Rack 12, ah, it's a tough one. Yes, it's a super great weapon, especially with Nova Pilot and the implants that are available. Uh, missile Rack damage increase, Missile Rack radius damage increase. With these implants, yes, it could be a top tier, top five weapon choice. I would say, yes, invest into it, but please hold a little bit, okay? Hold a little bit. If you can rank it up to six and dual equip Missile Rack 12, that's great, okay? Not Thermal Lance, throw it away. Stasis Beam, guys, I'm so sorry to tell you this. I, if you guys see, I invested a lot in my Stasis Beam. It's rank six right now, level three. So I put a lot of money into this. But if I tell you, if I can backtrack in time, I would not invest into the Stasis Beam 16 as much like this, okay? The reason, once again, is it's a great weapon, but there's just better choices, okay? It's a t tier two weapon, okay? Tier two weapon. And shotguns, throw it away. Arc Turret 6, don't upgrade it, guys. Okay, don't upgrade Arc Turret 6. I'm sorry if you're upgrading now. Stop upgrading it. Wait for your Arc Turret 10. Max this out. Okay? I'll be honest, guys. I don't think Arc Turret 12s are going to come out very soon. But I'm sure they're going to come out with Arc Turret 12s or something similar to Arc Turret in the near future. But right now, Arc Turret 10 is probably the top one of the top two weapons even better than Railgun, in my opinion, okay? So to Arc Turn 10, you must invest. This is the best weapon, one of the top two best weapons. So yes, if you have Arc Turn 10, start investing now and don't worry about your investment. You're not gonna waste anything. Long Arm 10, I'm sorry guys, but just do a limited investment because once you have Railgun 16, this is in the top five weapons, okay? I think it's probably ranked three or four best weapon, okay? Exclu excluding rocket mortars, okay? So railgun is probably top uh, top three or top four weapon. Yes, and once you get railgun and you uh, you get into rank six, you get the dual equip ability and the long arms become useless, okay? Javan rank four and six, now stop investing in those. Javan rank eight, I think it's decent, but at the end game scenario, I think Javan Rack 8s are not as useful. I think it becomes top uh, tier two or tier 2.5 weapons, okay? So I think you should, shouldn't should invest too much in uh, Javan Rack 8 unless, 
unless you're a free to play player or a very low investment player. So you don't make lots of premium purchases, then the Javelin Rack 6 and the Javelin Rack 8 is probably one of the most annoying weapons for any player, okay? It's very annoying when you have an opponent who uses Javelin Rack. And so I think it's a great weapon if you're not going to be a heavy, heavy purchaser, okay? Heavy, heavy premium user. Cryo Javelin, I don't think many people have it. Even if you have it, I think it's quite useless. I'm sorry. Uh, so, you know, you know, I think it's quite useless. I'll just be honest, guys. Disc Launcher 8, once again, if you're going to max out Shadow or Lancer, this is probably the best weapon available for those mechs that have a max capacity of 16 when maxed out. But Disc Launcher 12, guys, once again, this is the top th uh, three or four weapon, okay? So it's very similar to a Railgun. If you ask me the versatility-wise compared to a Railgun, I think Disc Launcher 12 is a better weapon than even the Railgun, okay? So it's probably the third best weapon, and then probably the rank four is uh, Railgun, in my opinion. Once again, my opinion. This is a must-max-out weapon, especially with the new implants available, with the reload time, the damage increase, and also the radius, and blah, blah, blah. It's just a great weapon. Now, Rocket Mortars. Rocket Mortars can be the best number one weapon in the game, or it can be not in the ranks, okay? Now, if you ask me honestly, don't in invest in eight, don't invest in 10, just go pure to uh, Rocket Mortar 12, get rank six here, get the dual equip ability, put it onto a mech that can do 24 to 30, uh, 32 uh, energy capacity, max out Rocket Mortars, and it will be definitely a great pub uh, weapon. It will be also a great competitive weapon for a squad game, okay? But once again, it's very map sensitive. But it is just such a great weapon. It's I would say this is tier zero, meaning it's rank zero weapon because it could be just, just the best weapon in the game. It can completely destroy Railgun. It can completely destroy any kind of opponent. But at the same time, it's map sensitive. So I'm gonna say it's a zero uh, rank, uh, tier zero, okay? Rank zero, meaning there is no rank to it. It could be the best. It could be, you know, maybe the fifth or sixth or seventh uh, uh, you know, ranked weapon, okay? But anyways, Rocket Mortar 12s are definitely worth the investment. I'm loving it. It is one of the cheapest weapons. I hate it when I meet it on the opponent. Now the opponents hate me because I have, a, uh, you know, a rank six with dual equips, okay? So guys, I know this video was long, but I really hope you guys watched it. If you guys focused in, I'm going to guarantee you, you guys would have learned a lot. Uh, and I'm sharing my personal experience uh, playing the game as a premium user, as a official content creator of Mech Arena, and also, as you guys can see, I've invested a lot of real money into my Mech Arena hangar and into my gameplay and into my, uh, giving you these tips. So I really hope that it's helpful for you. Uh, if you guys want to try out, once again, my control settings here like this, you guys are free to try it out. But in order to play like this, Please remember that you must use camera sensitivity 100. So uh, even if my hangar review, uh, even though these hang uh, these mechs and weapons are not something you can uh, you know obtain in the near future, and you're grinding your way through slowly, at least try one thing. I would want you to take is start practicing with camera sensitivity 100. Okay, so that when you meet an opponent like me, who's just dashing right into you, into your face, moving side to side, you know, going around you, and you're, you're, you're basically panicking and you're moving half the speed, trying to aim at me when your camera sensitivity is slower than mine, I'm sorry, but you're never gonna beat me unless you start practicing at 100, okay? So anyways, guys, this was my first, it was my settings, my control settings, sharing with you how I play the game. Also, it was my uh, Dream Team Hangar update until now, as of today. Also, it was giving you my in-depth analysis, my personal experience, once again, my personal opinion on the mechs here, the, all the mechs available, and then also all, my, all the weapons available and how to invest and what to invest so that you don't waste your money like me on some weapons. And then the pilots, this I will talk to you later, but I'm gonna just be simple with you guys once again, just go with the higher tier. I'm sorry, stop wasting your, wasting your money on investing on these rare pilots. This is a trap made by Plarium. Just try to get your epic uh, pilots if you can. If you have obtained them, great. If you haven't, wait for the next epic and just invest in those, okay? All right, thank you guys, and I hope this video was helpful. I would really love to hear in the comment section how helpful my tip was today. If you disagree with some things I said, I would love to hear those as well. As you guys know, I wanna hear it. I want you to share it because I'm not the answer, guys. 
I'm just sharing you my experience, okay? Hello, uh, so guys, this was Honor Gaming. I almost said hello again. And <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this super long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope it wasn't a waste of your one hour of your uh, very valuable life, okay? Thank you, guys. Have a great day. See you guys soon in the next tournament run videos with my subscribers.